Hi everyone, this is an instructor Asma Mushtaq from the W Vibes and in today's lecture you will learn the operation of the H trigger D flip flop. Uh, you can see right here this is called the H trigger flip flop. Why? Because the flip flop actually uses the clock pulses and uh, since this is the D less so this data D is supposed to be transferred at the output side Q. Whatever the value of D is should be forwarded at the output side. Since it's the positive edge triggered free flow, so whenever the clock signal will switch its value from 0 to 1, then at that moment, the value of D should be forwarded at the output side. So if D was equal to 0 or if D is switching to 0, then the output should also be equal to 0 in this case. Now back to the circuit, we can see that we have used three SR latches for designing a single H-triggered D flip-flop and D, which is actually the positive H-triggered flip-flop. This clock signal is common to both these NAND gates. Fine and here is the input D. Also you can see I have marked the output of each NAND gate at the first stage as P1, P2, P3 and P4. Here P1 is equal to S or represent the set input while P2 is representing the reset input. Fine. As long as this clock signal is equal to 0, the changes introduced by this input D will not be transferred at the output side. Or in other words, this latch is or this flip flop is actually deactivated or it doesn't respond to the change in the input for understanding this let's see when this clock input is equal to zero this zero is common at both these NAND gates which will force the inputs s and r to be equal to one making equal to one so when s and r both are equal to one let's see the previously set output q was equal to one and q bar obviously equal to zero fine so this q1 is fed at the input of this nand gate making one one equal to zero and then zero one equal to one so the latch or the flip-flop remains in the previous state or it doesn't change its value no matter whatever the value of the D input is. So let's see if D was equal to 0. In that case when clock was also equal to 0. So automatically the output should be transferred. But we will see it doesn't actually change. When this D input is equal to 0. It will force this NAND gate to produce output equal to 1. This 1 is actually forwarded over here and this one is also the input of this NAND gate fine but since the input of this these NAND gate has been held at the logic level 0 that's why no matter whatever the value of D is it will not change the value of S and R hence making the flip flop in the retaining state fine because if this is equal to 1 it's also equal to 1 so 1 1 pr will produce output equal to 0 this 0 is fed back over here so 0 0 will produce output equal to 1 and hence s is also equal to 1 and or is r is also equal to 1 hence whatever the value of the this d input is not affecting the value of the this d latch as long as the clock signal is disabled so if you draw the table for this S uh, for this D flip flop, you can see that simply here is the clock signal, here is the input D, and here is the output. As long as this clock is equal to zero, you don't care about the value of D. The output remains in the previous state. Fine. Now let's see what happens when you make the clock signal equal to 1. Okay, now uh, what we are going to do, we are actually going to 
switch the clock signal from 0 to 1 so clock signal is actually equal to 1 in that case and if d is equal to 0 fine once you have set this data input d is equal to 0 it will force p4 to be equal to 1 or in other words p4 is actually equal to the complement of d this one is fed back over here as well all right and you can see that since you have switched this clock signal from 0 to 1 fine this is equal to actually 1 so this one is fed back at this point the clock signal is also equal to 1 and since we have switched the output from 0 to 1 so previously p1 was set equal to 1 and p2 was set equal to 1 they both were actually equal to 1 in the previous stages fine so this one is coming at this input as well so 1 1 1 will force this NAND gate to produce r is equal to 0 now fine this has set r is equal to 0 while what happens over here this p1 was equal to 1 so p3 was forced to be equal to 0 this 0 is fed at this input while this input with common with the clock so 0 clock 1 will force s1 to be equal to 1 now in this case you can see that clearly now s input has switched equal to 1 and r input has changed its value from 1 to 0 now what happens this 0 will force this NAND gate to produce output equal to 1 and this one is fed back to the upper NAND gate forcing its output to be equal to 0 since both in its inputs are equal to 1 hence making the value of d to be forwarded at the output side all right so what happened let me describe again more quickly when you switched the clock from 0 to 1 in the previous stage p1 and p2 or r and s both were equal to 1 since these is actually made up of the latches so they will retain their output fine when you made d equal to 0 this NAND gate produced produced output equal to 1 this one was common over here similarly this one was coming at the input of this NAND gate clock signal and then this one produced output equal to 1 or made r equal to 0 fine and hence what happened the value of this flip flop is actually set equal to 0 or the data has been transferred at the output side now during that time, now we will see if the clock signal is held high and d switches its value from 0 to 1 so i mean to say this is actually the clock signal and it is high and the d input actually changes its value from 0 to 1 should the output q change its value or not okay since it is the edge trigger flip-flop the only changes are produced at the rising edge of the clock and no matter if d changes its value from 0 to 1 while this clock signal is held high the output doesn't change it remains 0 for understanding this concept let's make this d input equal to 
one now. We are much sure of the fact that now S input had been set equal to one. R input had been set equal to zero. Fine. When D was equal to zero and clock was equal to one. Okay. Since this one is present at this input, clock signal is also one, and now this input D is actually one, while R is equal to zero in this case. So you can see zero is being fed over here. Zero one will make output equal to one, or P four will be equal to one. Fine. This P four is actually fed at this NAND gate, and also this one is present on the input of this NAND gate. So one one will again generate P three to be equal to zero, and this zero with one will produce S equal to one. So S remains as it is. Fine. Similarly, R remains as it is. So no matter if D changes its value from zero to one, the output will remain as it is. They will not change their state. Since S is equal to one, R is equal to zero. Zero will force this NAND gate to produce output equal to one, and then this one will will be fed back on the top of the NAND gate, and these will generate output is equal to zero. So. we conclude that the edge trigger flip flops only introduce the changes on the rising or the falling edge of the clock signal they are the triggering devices at the edges they are not sensitive to the levels of the clock signals i hope you got the idea if you have any question you can drop your questions or queries in the comment section and also like and subscribe to my channel thank you for watching